Welcome to the Finding Happiness podcast, where we talk about business, marketing, and personal growth. Um, my name is Bobby, and today we have Josh Morales in the studio today. Um, we've been following each other for a minute, and we have not officially met each other yes. until today. <laughs> and you would think it'd be weird, but I guess that's the world we live in now, where the content kind of makes us feel like... Connected. We, connected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to, before I give you guys some information, I'm going to let him kind of give us a little backstory, just some basics of um, what you're doing right now, your age, and what's going on in your life, and we'll kind of dive back. For sure, man. Bit. Well, I want to thank you for having me here. Um, I was actually really excited. I told, like, everybody about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm about. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to be here, this and that. Uh, yeah, so my name is Josh, 20 years old. Been a real estate agent for about a year and a half now. Okay. Um. And yeah, that's that's what I am, man. Fitness, you know, work. Okay. Like. So twenty years old. <laughs> we we talked we talked a lot. Um you're okay, so go, give you a quick heads up. Whenever um that's your main camera right okay. there. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then that's our camera and then the rest. Yeah. So anytime right, you sure. know you're gonna sp or you're gonna talk, you can always look, look at, at the at camera. That part, right, that's the part sure. that's gonna go on Instagram. But um, <laughs> Let's play a little bit here. Is yours opening up on your end, jo Josiah? Yeah, it says retrieving for a second, but then I got it. Okay, so Josiah we have on in the back, so he's going to be chiming in on today's episode. Yep. Okay, so again, Josh didn't really give you guys any information. He's a boss. Uh, <laughs> he, he's closing deals in real estate. He's 20 years old. He's built discipline. He has habits that are good. And I say this because I have kids your age and stuff like that. So it's a big thing to where you're at now. It, it just shows that the kids growing up have have someone that's leading them to, yeah. to the right part. Um, so it's pretty cool to see that. So And then he's, he's, he's fit. Like he wakes up, he goes out, and he does his fitness, and it shows. So all of that plays a big part in your life. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and a little bit about family too. For sure. All right, let me pull this up here. All right, so you mentioned um, <clears throat> you're 20 years old. So what is that? So you, when did you get your license? Uh, 2020. So during, during COVID, were you, was it in the beginning or was it on the end of? Um, well, I had actually, I got my license in July. Okay. Um, but I was still like finishing high school. And then after high school, I was, I knew I was going to go to college. I just didn't know if I wanted to continue, you know, college or go to real estate. So I was like, let me just try out college, see how it works. And then if not, I have the, I still have the license, you know? So I went for two weeks and I was like, this is not it for me, man. <laughs> so was it was it more of like going, you went up to class and everything? Yeah. You sat in there? It was online. It was online for me. I had one class in person, never got to that class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I showed up. All, okay, okay. Yeah. So in that, that very moment, was it like, okay, this isn't it. Let me try real estate. Or was it, this isn't it. I, I'm going to see what else is out there. Um. It was more of this isn't it. Let me try real estate because okay. I was also I also had a job at that time too. What were you doing then? Uh, I was a server at a restaurant. Now, what restaurant was it? Tacos Way. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I was. How there. was working there? It was a lot, man. It was a lot, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, it was hectic, for me at least. You know, I that place is it's a good place, but there's a lot of people who go there, okay. who carry themselves differently especially since they serve alcohol those people act a certain way certain times um mm. but i was making a lot of money okay which okay. is like it was that's the only reason i was able to buy the house was because all my money i got from there would go into the house and i was also making um <clears throat> real estate money yeah so that's where it would go you know so that's pretty cool okay so during school you already had a job yeah so yeah was that something just growing up, because my sister was like that. My sister started, um, she got a job during, I, I would say around like 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't work during school. We did it with my pops. My pops was a truck driver, so we worked when he was back mm -hmm. home. But my sister had that lifestyle where she wanted to work. She wanted her own money. Yeah. 
what was it like for you? Was it more of I seen, I don't know, my parents hustle or I wanted my own money or was it just in, in your household where, hey, it's time to work, it's time to get your skills up? So it's a funny story. Um, I got the Jeep truck when I was 17 years old. Okay. <clears throat> and there my parents were like, but this is, they didn't tell me this. So my parents got me the truck. It was literally just out of the ordinary. We went to go look at it. They got it. And then the next day I was working out and they're like, all right, you got to go get a job to make these payments. And I was like, Bro, are you serious right now? I was like, <laughs> never did you tell me that I was supposed to make payments. Never did you tell me that I had to pay for the car. And I would have been fine without it because I was driving like a regular car. So then they told me that, and then I was like, damn, like, now you just ruined the rest of my workout. <laughs> now I got to think about this, man. It was like, I've never worked like that in, like, a 9 to 5. I was doing just the door knocking or the open house signs. So for me to go do a 9 to 5, it was like a, I don't know, it just felt weird. Okay. So then um, they're like, well, my friend owns a restaurant. Um, you can try and, you know, apply there, go work there. And I was like, okay, let me go try it. Um, started working there. I still did not want to work. It was like not my thing. Um, and then I started working, you know, a couple months in, started working five days a week. And then that's when I was like, damn, this is like, it feels good to have my own money. It feels good to be able to provide for myself. And, you know, that's when the hustle started coming in. So that's cool. Yeah. See, okay. So what was, um, what was one of the craziest things that you can remember that happened there? Um, like just in, I guess more on the the customer base. Someone coming in where you're like, what? Like, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> um, I think it's just there's a lot of stuff there. I had I didn't really experience anything myself. Um, just like the customer service, I try to give them good customer service, negative feedback, you know, stuff like that. But it wasn't any crazy experience. No, nah, no. Thank okay. God. What was the breaking moment when you knew? <clears throat> You were done when I was done. Um, so I bought the house. Um, I was, you know, making good money in real estate. My parents were just like, they were more on the motivational side of doing like having me do that. I was like, no, I, I don't feel like I'm in the right position to do it. And they're like, well, you'll never know if you don't do it. So I was like, that. that's when it was like, damn, I think damn, it's time, dad, you know? You do that, huh? You're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, I got that, yeah. Okay. so my, my parents are a big help in everything. So yeah, so they were like, you know what, just do it. Let's try it out. If not, there's nothing wrong. We'll figure it out. And okay. I'm like, okay, you know, that, that sounds great. Because like I was making good money. I had the real estate money. I also had money to fix the house. So it's like, it was everything was set. Just for me, it was a final decision of making it. And so then I think I stopped working there. I want to say... Damn. Last year of like December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was more of because now real estate, you're full time in there. Everything yeah. is good. And now, I mean, it's more. Of yeah. yeah. And it state. was just taking a risk, you know, just it, we'll figure it out day by day. If it doesn't work out, then we'll do something else. You know, this and that. I was also like, I don't know. I felt very accomplished at, you know, the age I was to have a house. And that's when I was like, if anything, I just sell the house, make money because the house was in horrible condition when you bought I put it. money into it. Okay. And then that would have been like a quick flip. So for those of you listening right now or watching, <laughs> he did tell you his age and he's talking about how he bought his house and his job. If you listen and go back, if you need to, but he, he told you <clears throat> not only real estate that was doing, he had a job, you had a job. Yeah. And then you started real estate and you continued. You didn't quit the your, your job because you made a couple checks or yeah. anything like that. So that is, I think that's <clears throat> the key part to making that transition. You still held, you still built yeah. all your money there. You were able to buy the house instead of buying, I guess, the car later yeah. on because you did get a car. I mean, the situation was a little bit different, but that little part also motivated you to go out and... yeah get the job from there. The job was hustling. Like you said, you got a taste of the money started coming in, but it feels good when you, yes. when you go to work and then they pay you and then you do something better. They pay you more. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, so this is how it works. Yeah, this is how yeah. it works. Now, were you nervous leaving the job going full time, like real full time yeah. in, in real estate? I was, I was nervous. Um, one of the things that 
I wasn't really good at was money management. Um, okay. I mean, it, it's obvious I was receiving checks every two weeks. That's when, like, once you get into that mindset, you're like, oh, I'll be fine. You know, I'm getting a check in two weeks. Oh, I'll be fine. But here in real estate, you don't see money every two weeks. You don't see money, like, often, you know? So I was nervous learning how to man, man, how you say it? money manage. Money manage, yeah. So I was like, that's the only thing. But I knew that, like, if I take this risk, it would be worth it in the end. And then from there, you know, just start learning little by little how to properly do everything. And then, you know, it'll go. It'll, it'll all follow each other. Do you, do you feel like... Hold on, that was good. Right. <laughs> do you feel like um, you know how to manage money now? Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm still figuring that out. I let my wife do it. I don't even know if you know how to do it, but nah, she does. She, she runs everything. I'm terrible with it. Really? And me and my fiance, we like we always like be arguing about yeah. it all the time. <laughs> See, That's the thing though, is that I realize that as much as you hate it, a girlfriend is going to be spending your money most of the time, man. And it's not a bad thing, you know. I love to give people, like, show my affection with that. But at the same time, it's like, I got to figure out, you know, how I want to spend my money first before I go and spend it on somebody else. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So that's just an educational part where you get to, I guess, it's, it's not even a certain age. You get to a certain part of your life where you're like, okay, it's time to stop messing around. Yeah. Like, I got to nip this in the butt because if I don't, yeah. all the hard work and then you look back and I don't got nothing. It'll, it'll all just like when I so when I would get um checks from that restaurant I would also get tips so I went through a system of like a certain if I see a certain number let's say I get a check of like four hundred and thirty two dollars mm-hmm. the thirty two dollars would go into my checkings the four hundred flat would go into the savings and that's how I do it and then the tips would just be divided in half oh, so okay. I make well I, I actually make a lot of money. Um, so let's, the minimum I'd ever be, it was like 200 bucks a day. So I'd be working there three days a week. So I make 600 a week, split it in half, half of it to the checking, half of it to the savings. And then from there, that's how I just kept on going and going and going. So I had a certain system of how it would go, just keep on doing that. And then it worked out. Okay. Okay. So for anyone looking for a job right now, would that be a smart thing to do to get into like the restaurant business because of the tips or what would be something right now yeah. like, for like. They're studying for the real estate test or maybe a, a lending or whatever that yeah. requires studying. But right now they need to make money. Yeah. Would you say go go to there? Or? I'd say go to a restaurant. Many people actually what I've heard is like, oh, go get a sales job. You know, go do solar, go do car salesman, this and that. I'm like that will work only for a certain amount of time. You'll learn how to sell, but it's not about selling. Many people come back to you because of the customer service. Mm-hmm. Many people come back to you because of the quality you provide for them. And I learned a lot of quality and like customer service through a restaurant you know as much as you want to curse the freaking uh client off you got to be nice to them man because then they'll come back and then you know they'll keep on coming back they'll remember your name and they'll pay you even more and they'll keep on going and going so that's like a good way to look at it you know yeah you'll you'll do good in solar and this and that but you won't learn the steps before you need to get into solar because once you have the customer service down once you get into solar, it's freaking easy peasy. You'll you'll naturally have the habit of being nice mm. and having good customer service. Now you just got to learn to sell scripts. And that's... You're right. It's the customer service because you have to learn to not jump over the yeah. counter and start fighting like we see these videos where people are like, fight. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they disrespect me or they did this. Mm-hmm. You're probably having a bad day, first yeah. off, and you're just the, the person that they're yeah. taking out on. Who's a better person to the one that can learn how to be like, okay, I feel bad. You're just having a shitty day. Let me help you out. Yeah. Take the meal, smile a little bit. Off yeah, you yeah. go. You carry that same mentality to everywhere you go in exactly. life. You're able to, to be like Gary Vee. Yeah. <laughs> you end up being like Gary Vee where yeah. like nothing really affects you. Exactly. You, you, you know <clears throat> that it's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. So I like that going that route. And then you said also, it's not the sales part you're only looking for. At that moment, you're looking for money and Tips play a big part. With yeah. You, right? Because, I mean, you can count that day and be like, all right, well, I know I'm only making six hours worth of work, but I don't know what the tips could be. Like. Yeah. It could be a good day. I can exactly. smile more. I can say something. So, it'd be good to uh, get your bread up. Okay. So, prior to that, before that, you... Okay. A little bit of context. How did you get into real estate? Um, I My family just... It was implemented into my daily life. Um, I used to door knock for my mom. I used to do open house signs. Like I, every weekend, um, the people would have open houses. They'd like jot it down where it's at, how many signs. In the morning, I'd wake up, go put the signs up. At night, I'd go 
bring them down. Same thing the next morning. So I was around it. It was natural thing to me, you know, okay. conversation. I didn't really know anything about it until I got into real estate. And it's like, it's funny because many people are like, how do these, how, how do you not know anything about real estate? This and that. But it's like, I didn't know anything when I got into it, you know? It's different because people that are older kind of know they bought a house. They know somebody bought a house. Yep. Conversation. But nobody at my age bought a house. Nobody, no. even know, nobody even knows what a mortgage is. So it's like never a conversation, you know? But yeah, so I got into it um, my senior year okay. of high school. Um, and I just took a leap of faith, man. I was like, let me just, I'm at home 24-7 because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, my mom was like, take a test. Just, you know, it's, it's simple, easy. If you want to do it and if you want to continue doing it, then, you know, all you need to do is just take a test. And then okay. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take the test, you know, figure it out and this and that. Um, once I stopped going to school, I completely like full time. Actually, no, I wasn't full time. I was half the restaurant, half uh, real estate. Okay. So um, real estate, was like um how do you say it um like the the main focus for me gotcha gotcha okay um and i just it's just like it's it's something that i like because it provides value to something you know at the end of the day like value is what you bring to other people and those people bring you value back you know and i felt like i had no value man it was like you know why am i here what's my purpose what am i doing you know so it felt good. Like I loved it. It was like learning about it, you know, being the youngest to do it, making videos. Nobody was making videos. They were just like, no. it was, it was now it's becoming more popular because it's getting easier. And there's people like yourself who provide services of that. Many people didn't like to do it on their own and I was doing it on my own. So that's just how I got into it. And then content creation was actually like a fun thing for me. Okay. 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 So you mentioned, uh, your moms and pops. So what does your, your dad do? Uh, my dad's a lender. Okay. So he's been in the game for quite some time. Over 20 years. Over 20 years. And yeah. your mom's broker. Yes. Okay. Probably the same. Same thing. Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Some, some. <laughs> okay, cool. Now growing up and I, I get it. My, my, my dad's a truck driver. Like, just because your parents are something doesn't mean, like, you ultimately know it. Yeah, like, yeah. I worked and did stuff for my dad, but I got paid, so that's why yeah. I did it. It wasn't because I was soaking in knowledge and stuff yeah. like that. So, did did the parents ever be like, hey, um, you should, do you ever think about real estate? I mean, it sounds like maybe during COVID a little bit, you should take the test. So, they started seeing, like, try it out. Growing up, before real estate and all that, were you trying to do anything else where your parents were like, motivating you yeah um, yeah, um there that. was there was a lot of things i wanted to do <laughs> um soccer player was one of them like okay. in early ages of high school uh fitness content creator was like one of them okay um i did that for a while but i was like i i felt ridiculous and <laughs> i don't know why bro <laughs> i was like this is embarrassing but you did that you did the size soccer did you guys did, did you go like Full force? With no, it? no, okay, I just okay. went up to senior, like just senior year, and then I stopped after that. Um, I actually, I actually, um, my last senior year, I went to a different school. Okay. Um, I was already there for like a little bit. Because, actually, no, sorry. I was in that city for a little bit because of middle school. Okay. So I knew people there. It was fine, you know, but I just didn't know the soccer program. Went to try out. I made varsity uh starter and everything it's just i did not like the coach unfortunately uh, that plays a big part. yeah it that does plays people a huge part because <clears throat> you can't love the game if the one that's teaching you is you just yeah and the way he played it is just not like i did not like it and um we weren't doing so good and i was like i'm just i'm honestly wasting my time you know it, it's fun but it's not f as fun as it used to be playing with the people who i played with before that school because i knew these people but i didn't know them know them you know gotcha, gotcha. so i felt like i was just going show up you know, play and then go home. I was never really connecting with these people. And many of the people that I played soccer with had already graduated. They were older because I was on varsity. So they were all like older people, yeah, you know? You. Okay. So yeah, so that's so what happened. So with that, I mean, going to a new school, like during that time, that was weird? Yeah, it was weird. And um, well, my junior year, I transferred over. I forgot what. There was some situation that happened that made me transfer over to Simi. Um, but yeah, so I went to Simi Valley High School like the end of junior year, literally like two months later, COVID happened. So I was uh, inside mm -hmm. most of the time. And then senior year came around, a little still inside, but they were able to play soccer and gotcha, like football okay. and stuff. So okay. we were doing that. Yeah, but it was weird, man. I was just like, I don't know. I didn't fit, feel like I fit in, honestly. 
So now, fast forward into your age now, what you're doing, do you feel like you fit in? Like, are you, do you feel like you're finding yourself? Are you fitting into what you're creating or you're still um, that part out? Fitting like, in as in like just, with other just people or just, just wherever I'm just at? Where, like, do you feel like, okay, like where I'm going, I'm fitting in? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I feel like, well, there's, there's many things I want to do in life and, you know, slowly and surely it'll get to them. But where I'm at right now, I do feel like I fit in. Um, and it's just, it's just, a, it's like, I don't know, it's a progress of things, you know, um, real estate, I fit in with the people because I know everything. No, I'm sorry. I don't know everything, but I know most of what's to be known in real yeah. estate, you know, so I can have a conversation with these people and I like learning. So they'll tell me and I'll just listen and listen and listen and they'll be cool with me. And, you know, like I make conversation and this and that fitness. It's like, everybody knows me at the gym, you know, it's like I fit in with those people and just me and my life, I, I feel like it's um, not necessarily I fit in, but it's like where I'm supposed to be. I love that because um, I think <clears throat> most of the time we're, we, we complain, most people are complaining. I hear it. I, I see it about their time right now. Yeah. Either it's not where they want to be or um, that's usually what it is. It's never wh that's where they want to be. Yeah. And what I'm seeing with that is. You have to be patient with that. And that's why I asked the yeah. that part is, how do you feel about it? Because I asked Josiah, how do you feel like right now? Or do you feel like you're like you are where you're supposed to be? Or do you feel like, man, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And, and like, I, I feel like I'm out of place or like. No, I, I mean, like there are like some places in my life where I feel like I'm just about to get out. Like, I know, like I'm towards the end of it. But I know, like, I do feel like this is a career I, I'm liking. I'm liking do it, doing what I'm doing here. Um, but, like, every single time I'm like, oh, I'm not here yet. Oh, I'm not here yet. I'm not here yet. Like, I look at it, and then I look at those, like, those reels that are like, oh, like, hey, like, just remember, like, you're living the dream that your past self wanted. Exactly. Like, those, like, in my opinion, like, sometimes, like, I, I look at them, I'm like, that's so stupid. But then sometimes <laughs> I look at them, I'm like, yeah. well, like, that's kind of real because, like, I'm, like, Three years ago, all I wanted to be doing was editing videos, like yeah. making videos for, you know, any any type of anything. And now I am. And so and then when I do look at the people of where like I want to be, I'm like, oh, wait, like they're like 10 years older than yeah. me. Like I'm not like like way behind. Like I just I'm not there yet, maybe because of age and not saying like I can't be there, but like I don't need to be there right now. So I love that. Yeah. I love that because you guys are your age. That's why I asked you that. And I, I like that because you're not. Do you find yourself comparing every now and then? Yeah. I mean, everybody That's does. Normal, it. Right? Yeah, it's a normal thing. And if you don't, it you should because it also <laughs> forces you to, yeah, to do more. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And which is good is you're probably comparing yourself to people older than you. It's horrible, man. <laughs> That's and, all and it like is. It's all like it Josiah is. Said, yeah. Like Josiah said, <laughs> you're, you're able to, to kind of look and be like, okay. You're a lot older yeah. and like and I'm I'm here and I tell you guys this you you have way ahead of most people yeah. our age way ahead just continue what you're doing just even if you guys fucked up messed up start all over again you still have a head start yeah for most people yeah. so that's pretty cool so compare yourself you guys but make sure you compare yourself to the right people exactly that yes. are going to make you level up and not feel like <clears throat> crap or beat yeah. yourself down and then yeah. yeah one of the things that I feel is like the the worst part about that is like social media. Social media is a big thing that causes people to compare themselves. You know, they'll see like somebody going out every day, having nice dinners, you know, and vacations and stuff. And they're like, why am I not doing that? You know, what's wrong with that? But what people don't like, this is the thing that I've realized within time of real estate is like, rather than asking you, why am I not doing that? Why isn't that me? It's like, how can that be me? Yes. How can I do that? What am I going to do? Tomorrow, what am I going to do in a month? What is like? What is that? Gonna, what's going to put me in that position in a year? Because many people compare themselves every day. I mean, that's the first thing you see, like when you wake up in somebody's story, and they're like, 4 a.m. I'm up." I'm like, "I'm like, damn, damn bro, exactly, I'm like, yeah, bro." Oh, man, I'm like, and damn. you feel like shit after that. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. you on that. So it's like they're at a level of life where they're they they do that, you know, and that's them. That you're not there yet. You're not up at four in the morning. You're not, you know freaking geared up on hella what's it called caffeine to be yeah. doing that you know it's 
Their it's lives different. are different. Yeah. We don't know it. But I, I, I love that, though. Be, be cautious about that yeah. part. Because that person up at 430 could not have kids. Yeah. And some of them don't. I see I'm like, at yes. 430, they're not <laughs> having kids. And if they do, and then I'll see other people, how couples will work out. Yeah. I'm like, hold up. That means someone's watching their kids, probably their mother-in-law. Their yeah. father. We don't have that. So, therefore, yeah. we have to separate. You got to... That's where like that staying in your own lane, but at the same time, like you always want, you're always looking over, yeah. like just in case. But this is that discipline I talked about earlier with you. How f- fitness? <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, fitness taught you a lot of discipline. Yeah. Which, so okay, so tell me a little bit on how how you're building habits, how uh, fitness disciplines you. Just stacking muscles, waking yeah. up in the morning. Um, I used to go in the morning. Now I go in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's, fitness has been, like, my – the core value of everything I do. As much as it doesn't, like, seem like it is a good thing for people, people don't realize that that's what teaches you discipline, uh, consistency, persistence. It's, like, everything. And it's also a great therapy. Yes. Like, it's the best therapy, man. It's – I'd rather pay for a gym membership than go pay for someone to talk to and they can't solve anything, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's like, it's everything to me. I I wake up, um, when I used to go early in the morning, I'd wake up, eat oatmeal, you know, um, take my energy drink, go work out, and then I'd be over with. And there's days where this is why I fixed it because I didn't feel great in the morning. As much as I hate to say it, my stomach was like the horrible in the morning, worse. bro. Okay, okay, it was horrible, good, you know? That's good because you were listening to yeah, your man. So it's like, 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 no, I got it. <laughs> he said, if I'm not a man, I, I have to Yeah, be I was that's like, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'd be, I tried it for a little bit, didn't work out. Um, and then I started going in the afternoons. Now in the afternoons, I feel great. It's like, I even though it's in the afternoons, it's like yeah. I go home, I eat a meal. Um, I work out, I go home and eat, and then I read a book and go to sleep. But it's like that that whole consistency of when I used to work out at home in the gym, um, knowing what I had to do, like with chest, back, those workouts. Obviously, I didn't know what I know now back yeah. then, but it all came with time, you know, learning about other muscles, learning about mind-muscle connection, learning about what these people do and how they did it. And then, you know, you go through a step in life. And that's what helped me understand the whole value of patience and time. Yes. Okay. Because everybody wishes that they could get muscles from one day to another. Yep. But that's not how it works. You know, it's like you keep on working out. You stay consistent. You fix yourself, fix what you need to fix around you in order to do that. Yes. Once everything around you is in its place, that will start making, you will start making progress with that. And that's what people don't realize is that you could be working out every day, but if you are still drinking, if you're eating horrible, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not drinking enough water, there's no point in you working out. Yes. Just stay home. There's no point because those affect more than you spending hours in the gym, putting muscles, strain on your muscles, and you're, like, not making the other effects. It's a domino effect. One thing leads to another, and then you'll finally reach the last domino, and you'll be where you want to be. All right, so since you're big on fitness, were you always, I would say, were you always fit, or were you skinnier or heavier, and then you got yeah. like this? Or No, I was skinny, man. Okay. Yeah, at least, I think in high school, I was, like, 115, 120. Okay. And... I mean, it wasn't bad because I was playing soccer, so it would just make me more agile, you know, faster, this and that. But it, I'd get knocked down like nothing, man. Yeah. It was as much as I tried to keep up, it was it was hurting me. So then that's what made me get into the gym, athletic training, and then we also had PE if we weren't playing soccer. Okay. And that's when it was like started becoming a thing to me. Okay. Okay. So then, dang. Okay. So a hundred and to say hundred and fifty, hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah. Which is, you know, it, it's kind of average for the for in high school, high school and stuff yeah. like that. And then um, it's it, you always have to want it. Yeah. Like you you want to get fit. You want to have the abs or, yeah. or any of this. You have to want it. Exactly. And then once you want it, like you mentioned, you have to create the life around it. Yeah. Cause that's where I was going. It was what you talked about, how you <laughs> create a life around. Okay, so... Going to the gym now, before prior to this, I, I haven't gone in a while because all I thought was it was work, work, yeah. work, work. 
I started going around with other investors and all my clients and, and going to these events. And I'm learning they all had one thing in common besides God was their family. Then, <clears throat> then work. They're all on stage. Their family was with them everywhere they went. God was too. But they all said none of it matters if you're not healthy. And it wasn't, so it wasn't me getting to the gym to get buff or get fit. It was me to get to the gym to get more healthier. Yeah. So I started off with, I, I think it was the Atomic Habits or the Compound. One of those damn books like mm -hmm. stuck in my head. But they would talk about Instead of running, go buy the shoes. Like, instead of running 10 miles, go buy a pair of shoes first. And then slowly put them on. Because if you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to hit the gym, I never went. I yeah. wake up, I'm like, damn, I don't want to go. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I started stretching. And then stretching, I started going to the sauna. And then I started naturally wanting to work out. And from yeah. there, I built these little habits. And now it's like, that's all I want to do. Yeah. So, um any other little habits that the gym's given you or <clears throat> or business has like kind of built like that? Yeah. Um, not really habits, just I mean the gym obviously built habits. Yeah. Like it's it's what my life is around, you know, it built everything. Um but it also taught me structure and doing everything right, you know? Um like let's I had I started off working out, literally just hitting anything and everything. Okay. You know, um, never really had a plan for what I was going to do. A plan of action, you know, just let me let me go into the gym and hit this, 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 and then I'll, I'll dip. Um, and then from there, it started being, all right, Monday's chest, uh, chest and try, Tuesday back, you know, the basic, the yeah. legs. And then from there, I started going from, like, having the days to having the actual workouts. From having the actual workouts to having the number of sets and reps within those there workouts okay. and then from there it's like the rest and then you know it just keeps on going and going so it's it, it all goes into effect of little by little like you're saying you know first start with the shoes and then you'll go into like actual running part so i started working out then i started planning the, the days then i started planning the um the workouts and then i started planning the the reps and the sets and stuff and then you know from there on and it's all just how you feel about it like i didn't uh, the same plan i have now was not the same plan i have when i started Absolutely. okay so then during this time um <clears throat> were you eating healthy or was it hard for you did you start working out first and then eating healthy or did you do it all at once um was it like okay i'm gonna start hitting the gym I got a plan and now I got to focus on eating healthy or is it one started and the other one was like, you know, what's crazy is that I've never actually had like an actual diet. Mm -hmm. I've never, right, okay. I've never stuck with like a diet and I like, I don't know. I, for me, my metabolism is so fast. When I started, like I'd eat anything and I'd wake up the same weight. I'd eat, you know, trash, pizza, whatever. I'd, I'd wake up the same weight. So I knew how my body reacted to gotcha, these things. Okay. So I just implemented those of what I needed to reach and then, you know, go from there. I did have like a fitness, uh, my, my fitness pal for like a little while, two, three months ago. And I saw results. I gained weight and this and that. But it was just... What is, what is that? My fitness pal? Yeah. So you... Um, pull it up on your app it's an app okay. and you'll you're able to scan the nutrition barcode oh as you okay, as you're so. putting it in so you'll say like it, it'll tell you the macros and everything and then you just put how much you're gonna do you've never done that before nope really i haven't got to that stage i'm no? not at that stage yet <laughs> well, i just barely put the shoes once, off well, yeah once you're there man it's it's a great thing it helped me out a lot you literally just scan the barcode of whatever okay. you're gonna do like chicken rice whatever and then you tell you put how much you're gonna put grams and this and that it'll tell you the calories and then protein source and everything so you'll have it logged and then you'll slowly start you know seeing results if you need to eat more, you're not gaining weight, then you add more food to it. If you need to okay. eat less, it'll tell you how much you need to eat less. And then it also you also tell it, like, say, um, I want to gain 120 pounds by December. I'm sorry, I want to well, gain 20 pounds by de December. It'll keep it on track, and it'll tell you how many calories you need to eat a day. and then you, Or you can implement the calories. Like if you already know the amount. Then I, fly. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm sorry. I was like, dude, something yeah. keeps fucking. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah. He's in here. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. Fucking flies. 
Yeah. I am, it's, it's all in front it's of the lens. Camera, oh, I yeah. see him right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little bitch, dude. <laughs> Get this asshole out of here. Um, you gotta check it out, man. I gotta, yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna ask my wife too, and I'm gonna yeah. clear that up because she's she's the main one that was like super uh-huh. into it. She wakes up, she kicks ass, and it's good. Motivates. You need me. people like that, man. I know, <laughs> but it's good though because it's easy. Okay, so what I want to ask is, are you like you are with your fitness? Are you like that in in real estate with your business? Like very detailed, having a plan when you're with your yeah. Um, are you, are you like that too? So was it like that before, or is it that something like fitness also taught you how to? Yeah, have that fitness structure? taught me that. Okay. Um, when I got into real estate, I was just literally had no clue what I was doing, no plan, um, no specific hours for anything. I was just going day by day. You know, wake up. What do I feel like doing today? You know, it was yeah. that type of thing. Right now, just recently started implementing timestamps of everything, hours of when I'm going to do this. Um, when it's time for this or like the night before, if it switches up my schedule, like let's say the podcast today, I already had a schedule for Monday, but since we made the podcast, I had to work around it. Gotcha. Yesterday night, I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do before. And then we'll get to the podcast. And then this is what I'm going to do after. So I already have a set schedule every day. If little things show up, then I add it and then just go after that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, what is, we're talking about schedule a little bit yeah. now. So what is your schedule for business? So are you making calls? Is yeah. it like an everyday thing where you're making your calls or what do you do? Um, yeah, so I wake up, make my calls. I mean, I try to be in the office by like 7.50 to make my calls at 8. From 8 to 9.30 uh, expired calls. Okay. From 9.30 to um, 10.30, it's just listed, just sold. Um, and then 10 30 to 11, it's da- database. So just like touching okay. up with people, following up. And then like around that time, it's either lunch or we have a meeting at the office. And then we come back afternoon, two to four, uh, door knocking. Okay. And then, you know, from after that, it's social media, it's four to five social media. So either engaging with people, posting something, posting a video. So that's, that's the plan right now. That's cool. Let's go. Okay, so was social media big at at your guys' office, or is it just big because of your age and it's just something you implement? You're already there, so it was like a no brainer. Instead of making calls, I could send DMs or I could, mm-hmm. you know, hit up some of my friends. And stuff um, like that. No, I, the only reason I implement social media is because I got a deal out of it in the beginning of the year. There you go. Yeah. Okay, okay. It was funny because I I I've never done this. Uh, just copy and paste it. Literally the same message to everybody. It was just like. Hey, I'm trying to reach a goal of 12 families yep. this year. Um, would love to help anybody you know in real estate or anybody you know that's looking to buy, sell, or, you know, rent even, you know. I'm, I'm here for them. And somebody was like, yeah, I think my brother is actually interested for sure. And I'm like, all right, give him, give him, give me his number. I'll call him up, this and that. So I called him up. At first he was like, no, nah, not really. You know, it's like we're just trying to figure things out, this and that. I'm like, okay, for sure. And the next day, he's like, actually, bro, like, we, we want to buy. So we helped him out, got him into house. And then, yeah, it's, then from there, I was like, all right, it works. So let me just keep work. on doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then little by little, you start to develop the part where, okay, cool. Now I understand this brandy. Yeah. yeah it's like, all right, cool. I just got to keep showing up. It's, exactly. it's different. But I tell agents and other people, don't ever stop. Yeah. What you're doing just because you have social media. You still have to have your fundamentals, your basics, your calls, mm-hmm. your door knocking, um, or direct mail, whatever. If you don't want door knock, you better be sending something yeah. to those addresses because if not, your those yeah. calls, man, like yeah. So I like that you still do that and you're you, you actually all of those ways. Now, yeah. what is one of the best ways or for you, your personal business has helped you the most, that's brought you leads or deals? Was it through Door knocking, sphere, social media marketing. Social media is probably the biggest thing for me. Um, I've had a lot of people hit me up through it. I've had a lot of recognition through it. Um, and even people in the, like the future, like, yo, I, I'm not planning to buy right now, but for sure in the future, I'll hit you up. Or in person, they'll be asking me questions like, yo, how does this, this, and this work, you know? And then that's how I get the ideas of like my videos Mm -hmm. because I feel like people ask the same questions and then from there you implement it into your social media and it's small things like engagements, uh, comments, likes, you know, comments or 
Like, yeah, I even send out um, Happy Mother's Day messages, yeah. Happy Father's Day messages, New Year's, this and that. I'm not saying, like, hey, if you know anybody, you know, this and that. It's like, don't I hate, do that. <laughs> like, don't be I like, hate, yeah, if it's hey, like, I've seen you, he's got a divorce. <laughs> hey, man. Exactly. You know keeping out? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I send out messages. It's like, Happy Mother's Day. You know, hope you and your family have a great day today. Just know you're appreciated as a mother. Uh, you are the, the, the center of everybody in the family. And, and they're like, thank you. That's it, you know? I'm not gonna be like, hey, oh, by the way, I do real estate. It's like I hate people it's do that, they you know. know you do it, exactly, so yeah. Be like, hey, hey, you know. By the way, sometimes exactly. just showing up makes people feel like, yeah, you know what, I kind of own. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I then, didn't give him any business. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me let me hook him up. Real yeah, quick. and it's if it doesn't, if it's not business, man, it's just as a person, you know. I'm, I love doing that. It's, it feels great. It's connection. Every yeah, day it's connection. Um, that's one of the biggest things with real estate. Now, do you remember your first deal? I like do. In general, the like smoothest was, deal in my it? life, man. After that, it was, I was like, it was, it was, it was an easy, easy, was easy. It during, um, like during COVID eras, or was it was already right after, um, like probably like twenty twenty. Twenty twenty one. Okay. The beginning of twenty. Actually, what year? Twenty twenty three. Yeah. So the beginning of twenty twenty one. Um, actually, out here in Palmdale okay. was my first sale, and it was uh, it was a referral. Easy. These people were just so nice. They're like, yeah, whatever, you know, this and that. We'll show them houses, liked houses, got into escrow, smoothest escrow ever, you know. And then after that, I was like, okay, this is easy, this you is know. Estate, this is real estate. I'm like, for my first deal as a referral, I, that was like, it was rare, you know. And I was like, okay, this is easy, this and that. And then we go on to the next deal. It's not easy anymore. I'm like, yo, this gets, is actually business, you know. It gets, it gets tough. But, That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what's the most you made and the least you made on a check? Whether it um, was a referral versus a full on. Well, I do rental. rentals as well, so okay, that's so probably yeah. the minimum amount I've seen. Yeah, because my agents out in Glen, we do a lot of yeah, yeah a lot of it's because they're they're investors, uh -huh. just don't want to yeah, yeah. list it. So yeah. that's why you got to take care of the rentals, yeah, the leases because they're not ready, and then yeah. when they're ready. Yeah, kick the tenant out. Let's go ahead and <laughs> clean up and, yeah. go. and then they're gonna unload 10, 20 properties when they're exactly, ready. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So the biggest one I've seen um I think is ten thousand. Okay. Now is it off of a on a buyer side, listing side? Buyer. Buyer yeah, side, okay. Buyer side. And then the smallest one I've seen, probably like two thousand. Two thousand? Yeah. This is good. So for those of you that are looking to get into real estate. Or because you think it's this or that, that's an average check right there between yeah. two and two and ten k. Um, it does change as you, depending your market mm -hmm. and you know where you're at and stuff. But yeah. for the most part, that's about average. That's about average. Yeah, it's market. average. Yeah, so that's good stuff. great. And just imagine, but they don't come every two weeks. Oh, I wish they did. <laughs> they come <clears throat> when you close your exactly. deal. Exactly. How and that hard could you be? Want that could be months. That could be. You know, weeks, it just depends on how hard you want to work. How hard is it to handle multiple deals at a time? Um, Clients, like buyers, let's just say having yeah, multiple buyers at a time. I think as long as you and your team know what they're doing, you know, they, they know the process of everything, it'll be fine. I have a TC, mm -hmm. so my TC handles uh, paperwork and everything. I just got to show up to the inspection, do the AVID, you know, um, do the, what was it, the contingencies mm -hmm. and everything, you know, that's, you know, the basics. But if you and your team know how to get it done, you know, what the steps are, you'll be fine. I came from a team <coughs> originally, and that's, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. They had a, the TC, they had the listing coordinator, we had everything, mm -hmm. pretty much every single thing. Yeah. And it set everything in place, just like in business. Yeah. It set everything in place. Your job isn't to know how to do all the paperwork. You guys know how to do it, but your yeah. job is to make sure your client is taken care of. Yes. And then now you hire the best on the team to yes. take care of each little chopping block. So yeah. that, that's good. So um, Boulevard Estates is where you guys are at. Yes. That's the company from your parents and stuff like that. Yes. So that how many locations do you know? Uh, three. Three, okay. We have Studio City, uh, Chatsworth, and then Palmdale. Okay, okay, cool. So we have these areas right here, pretty much handle all of, I would say, Southern California yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah. Keeps you pretty busy. And then um, real quick, we're almost done here because we got a ton of stuff. <laughs> Let me this see is good, here. man. Let me pull this 
this up here. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your accomplishments. Okay, so you you do everything at the gym, your yeah. fitness, and then you have your real estate. You're closing your deals. You bought your house, which was a huge accomplishment yes. at your age. It wasn't because, oh, yeah, I'm just going to buy a house. No, you you know what it does and what, what, what the good it comes yeah. with. And then you recently got a car. So talk, tell me about that BMW because that shit is bad. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, that, 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 that is cool. <laughs> now, most people are like, oh, all right, he got a... He's doing, oh, he must be doing good. He has all these $10,000 yeah. checks coming in every two weeks. How is it really? Um, it takes time. It takes time, It man. wasn't like, yeah. oh, I had all this. I got this. When, this was when I got the house, it was out of, like, the ordinary. Um, wasn't planned. I was hosting an open house for that house of a friend of mine. Nobody came to the open house, man. <laughs> it was nobody like, knows. nobody came. I was just there sitting, like, for three, four hours, and I was like, this is a nice house. I don't understand why nobody would want to buy it. You know, five bedrooms, three bath, uh, close to the golf course in Palmdale. Man, okay. it's like, it's perfect location. It just needs a little bit of work. Um, so, yeah, so that was like the only, and then I was like, okay, this is like something I would love to invest in because, I mean, it's in the prime location. It's five bedrooms. It's big for family. You know, it'll just needs a little bit of work and we'll be set. So that was that. Um, but the thing is, is that, what the house taught me was like um, a lot of things. It was, just, I don't know, when I first started working, that was the goal of mine, but it wasn't, it didn't, I didn't think it was going to be for real, you know? It's yeah. like, that was like, the, getting a house. That, man, that it, was like yeah. my first big goal or that I accomplished. And I'm like, damn, man, this feels great. Like, I was so happy for months, months, even though like, I had to pay a mortgage and I had to get it flipped. Like, just seeing the progress of that house is like, Damn, I did this, you know, it feels great. But before that, it was like horrible because I was working at the restaurant. Okay. And I'd put in weekends, weekdays. I'd n I haven't seen my friends for months. I haven't gone out for months. And it's just like, like, what am I doing at this age? Like, why am I spending so much time into this job that's a nine to five? And it's like, I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm not like, I'm not enjoying my life, you know? I could be gone tomorrow and this is how I want to be gone. You know, I was thinking about that stuff. But once it came to being able to purchase a house, all those hours, all that time spent in work paid off. And I was like, now I understand life, man. Like, it's no. literally like that opened up my mind so much. And you don't realize that those small things is like what makes you like just see a different vision of life. You know, and that's when I started putting in hours, uh, started working more, started, you know, like focusing just like literally just a straight lane. I have nothing else to worry about. And then that's when it like really opened up everything else. That's cool. So we got the house. You did the, what did you do? A flip on it? Or uh, it no, rental? no. So it's a rental. rental. Yeah, rental I'm getting it rented out right now. I, my mortgage is 4000 I I get 4500 mm -hmm. So there you so, go. Yeah, so I make a little bit of profit. It goes to like insurance for the mm -hmm. car and stuff like that, you know? So but yeah. you have the asset now. <laughs> yep. See, <clears throat> this is something I learned from, from Omar, one of my guys in this area. <laughs> yeah. His. Couple hundred dollar cash flow won't change your life, but that's not why you're doing it. You're not exactly. doing it for the five hundred dollar cash flow because that can be eaten up if something happened. You had to replace yeah. it. Yeah, you're doing it for the asset. Yeah, the asset. You're gonna have something long term that people spend their entire lives to get. Yeah, the American dream. Yeah, that's an asset for you where people spend a whole lot of time. So exactly. that's really cool. It's teaching you a lot, and it's just as it's your first of many. Yes, and to have it at this age. Now, it's important what you said. You were doing this at this age. Why am I doing this? I have yeah. kids at this age, and I know other kids that don't want to work, yeah. or don't want to do this. That's what they say. Oh, I could be gone tomorrow. Oh, what is all this? When they say that, what do you, what do you, what do you have to tell them? Nine-year-old, 20-year-old kid, why, why should I have to work? What's the point of working all the time for yeah. it if I could just be gone tomorrow? I get a lot of people asking me that, um, you know, like, why... <clears throat> why why do i why do you work so hard why is it something that you know <clears throat> you like to do i'm like i like to be uncomfortable i like a challenge i don't want to be um like okay with everything that i met you know it's a progress whether you're putting in hard work and you're going to be gone tomorrow you're going to be gone tomorrow and people are going to remember you as somebody who put hard work 
Yes. They don't want to remember you as somebody who parties and, oh, you know, he, he, he left because he overdosed or he left because he was drinking a lot or he was out every night. I mean, it, whether you die because you put in hard work or you die for your party, they're going to remember you that way. They don't care about the 20 years that you lived before that. They're going to remember you that final time that you were there. So I love that. I love that. So when someone says that, well, what's the point? Because <laughs> who had died died in <laughs> Yeah. You're probably not going to die. And we don't live our lives like yeah. that. We're all going to pass. It's, it's just part of life. Yeah. We don't go every single like, day like tomorrow's day. Yeah, yeah, no. Cause then, I, that's how it used to be, man. It was, now it's like I, I don't think about it as much as I used to. Um, but it's definitely a thought for sure, you know. The reason why I ask you is because at your age, Josiah's age, and the kids are just getting out, they just graduated or going into college and stuff like that. Like, it's really easy to want to get your check, mm -hmm. go buy your stuff, mm -hmm. go out, hang out with your friends, blow some money. It's easy. For what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live. I'll just get another check. Yep. But what are you doing it for? Now you now you realize, okay, well, are, yeah. well is that all you're doing it for? You're just working to go out. Yep. It's the same thing about the gym. We're going to the gym, we're working out, we're doing all this stuff. But if we're not changing our actual lifestyle, why are we even doing this? Yeah. The whole purpose was finding happiness was um it was my little journey. I went I, I kinda explained it to you. I went from like a call center. I mean yeah. I always hustled, bro. Like I played music, I did touring, yeah. I booked shows. I did the entrepreneur stuff. I did a few things on Amazon. Nothing stuck. The, the video part was the one that stuck. From there, I kind of doubled down. But the, it was finding my own little thing that made me yeah. happy. And was the one little thing was I just had to believe in myself. Yeah. My mom loves me, my pops and stuff like that. But they weren't worried about us going to school. None of us went to school. And it was my parents barely they didn't go to high school. They went to high, ninth grade. Yeah. My, my pops is a truck driver, has his own business, so he does well. So I learned that part, but <clears throat> we have to find our stuff, yeah. our own little thing. And we can't really depend on the parents. You had great parents. Josiah, he has good parents, too. You know, like, some of us don't. Some of us didn't. They, they did. They loved us, but they didn't know how to teach us yeah. something else. So sometimes, like, we have to find our journey, whether you're 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. The moment you can find your own thing, yeah. you got to run with it, man. Yeah. Because you're here because you decided to do it. Yeah. There's opportunities in soccer, fitness, mm -hmm. lending. Yeah. Really, you didn't have to go to any of those. But you decided, I want to go here, here, and here. Yeah. And they benefited you, so... Yeah, kudos, man. Like, Thank yeah, you. you're good, bro. Like, continue <laughs> what you're doing now. Yeah. Continue helping people. Continue seeing the people around you. Help them. You're going to be good. Yeah. Because everything you're doing is positive. Um, For you sure, a man. a good amount of time, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. So, appreciate you coming by. Of course, um, man. Where can they follow you at or find you on social media? Uh, social media is going to be JJ uh, OSH Morales. Uh, that's all social media. All right, you guys. So uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Take care. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs>